Hey, what's up, NBA fan? What's up, all sports fan? This is JB right here, host of the Behind the Bench podcast network and channel, giving a shout out to the rest of the crew. I'm talking about Shy, Kelvin, and Jermaine. For everyone who is tuning in, I hope that you support Behind the Bench, become a subscriber, and help make this podcast the best that it can be. Now, check this out. <laughs> I'm just shaking my head over here, man, because I can't believe that this is even being considered. Now, word is Dwight Howard wants to return back to the Los Angeles Lakers which would be not his second stint or his third stint. This would be his fourth stint with the team. Notwithstanding his initial run with the Lakers when he was traded to Los Angeles during the 2012-2013 season. Now he wants to return back for another stint with the team because he feels that he can shut down Nikola Jokic. This is where common sense has to be applied. And this is a prime example of why that NBA bubble has greatly exaggerated perception. And misrepresented the reality of where things truly stand and has misled a lot of fans to believe that he really did shut down Nikola Jokic but when you go back and look at that series Howard really only disrupted Jokic one game that was the first game and he, and Nikola Jokic was essentially being triple teamed by Howard, JaVale McGee, and Anthony Davis. Howard tried to bully Nikola Jokic. And he threw him off his game initially, but it was just that one game. The rest of the series, Nikola Jokic adjusted to that. As a matter of fact, as a result, he got Howard in foul trouble. The first game... Jokic was hit with, and Jamal Murray was hit with three early fouls going into that second quarter. From that point on, he was getting Howard in, in foul trouble. Now, this was three seasons ago. Howard was like 35 years old. Since then, he's played with the Philadelphia 76ers for a season, then returned back to L.A. for the 21-22 season, but he couldn't hold up. Because he's past his prime. He is aged. Like all great athletes do eventually. And even during the year of what turned out to be the bubble. He played limited minutes. He couldn't play starters minutes. He couldn't play like a 30, 32 minutes. He was averaging like 17, 18 minutes a game. And then you have to consider the fact that. The Nikola Jokic that he faced in 2020. Is not the same Nikola Jokic of today who just led the Denver Nuggets to their first franchise championship in NBA history for that city. But he darn near averaged a 30-point triple-double throughout the postseason. When he went up against the Lakers in 2020, and that conference final, that was the Western Conference Finals, by the way, which the Lakers did win in five games. After that first game, Jokic was averaging like 24, 25 points a game. Averaging about, probably about, what, seven, eight uh, rebounds, about six assists. Well, look at him now. He's entering his full prime. Right? He outplayed Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns in the first round of the playoffs. Outplayed DeAndre Aiden to such a point where they had to take him out the game and sub him 
and had the reserve play the majority of the game down the stretch. Then he outplayed Anthony Davis in the Western Conference Finals. Even though Anthony Davis had a very good series, he averaged 27.14 rebounds. Problem was, Nicole Oakley was averaging that darn near a 30-point triple-double, hitting big shots, and he can hit free throws. So if they were to bring Howard back to try to defend Jokic, it would be fool's gold because they're saying that they don't respect the competition and that they're reliant on past reputation. But in sports, you can't do that. It's not about what you did yesterday or a year ago or whatnot. It's about right now. Who's doing what right now? And it would be a bad decision. It would be a bad decision. Dwight Howard didn't even play in the NBA last year. Now, in his prime, he was the best center in basketball. Three-time defense player of the year. I think he was like four-time rebounding champion. He was averaging like 20, about 20 points a game, about, about 13 rebounds a game. He was tremendous. But the problem is that was 2009 when he led Orlando Magic to the, to the NBA Finals. Well, this is t- 2023, soon to be 2024. That's 14, 15 years ago. Jokic is now the game's preeminent center in the league. And could easily go down as the greatest passing center ever. And you're going to try to consider bringing back a Dwight Howard who would be 38 years old, played overseas, cannot play starters minutes anymore, and you honestly think he's going to hold up Nikola Jokic. It's not even based on logic. But see, this is what happens, though, when you're a team and you're led to rid of two young centers who you drafted back in 2017, 2018, who you could have developed over time and established them as your starting center for the next five to six years minimum. You wouldn't be having this problem of bringing this uh, big man in, bringing this big man in. They haven't been able to establish the, the center position in five years, and that's that's supposed to be the primary position that has propelled the Lakers to greatness over the past five, six decades. And they're bringing center in left and right from, from Dwight Howard to uh, DeAndre Jordan to Andre Drum. He's supposed to have been the meal ticket, didn't pan out. You know, uh, Damian Jones, Montrezl Harrell playing the five. They even had LeBron playing the five. There was one game they had Carmelo Anthony playing the five. Well, that's not going to... That's not going to fly no more because you got the best center in the world playing in the Western Conference in his, in his full prime. So it is what it is. That's why I say this is why you don't give up on your young talent. This is why because if you would let your young talent develop, like Ivica Zubats, who's 25, but instead of trading to the Clippers, he could be starting for the Lakers giving you 16, 18 points a game and double figures and rebounds. And he can shoot free throws at a high clip, around 70, about 73, 75%, and he's become a better defender. He can defend the pick and roll better than Dwight Howard can. But that's where we at, man. That's where we at. So I just want to throw it out there, man. Uh, like I said, Dwight Howard, this is no slight uh, him historically as a player when he was in his prime, like I said, he was the best center in the world, and he was a top five player. When he led Atlanta Match to the finals in 2009, Dwight Howard was a top five player in the NBA. But that was 2009. It's 2023. Nikola Jokic finished the season as the newly crowned champion, and he's viewed as the game's best player. Especially on offense where he's a triple threat every game. So... I just want to throw it out there real quick, man. But like I said, man, I hope they don't do it. But if they do, well, they can't say they was <laughs> they wasn't giving the heads up. But this is JB Redhead. Until next time, BTB behind the bench.